It feels like the first time. It feels like the very first time. It feels like the first time. It feels like the very first time. Hey, everybody! Welcome! <laughs> what? Why are you laughing? I don't know. This won't stay up. Before we go, can you help me with oh, this? Oh, it won't stay up. You're right. Yeah. What do I do? Just let it hang low. You have to pay it. You have to give it a little attention. <laughs> you got to tickle oh, the God. balls a little bit. Oh, yeah, just God. do that. That's fine. That'll be fine. Uh... You have to let it know that you know it's there. Guys, welcome. Welcome to the return of the first time show. Uh, remote quarantine edition as you can see brett register is here and alana ficus is here and if this is your first time joining us for this podcast uh i'd love to give you just a quick little explanation of what we're doing here um we're going to be watching the entire series of the leftovers hbo's the leftovers and we're gonna have a great time and the reason why we're doing this is because we had such a great time it was with a cur- Concise rundown. <laughs> What's that? So that was a really concise rundown. Thank you, Brett. I felt pretty good about it. I think it says everything we need to say. If this is their first episode. Yeah, it totally does. We did this with Lost, and we had a lot of fun. And basically, it's not your typical kind of like review show. It's like we um, we play clips and we tangent and actually, I don't know, maybe there are other shows like that, but we did it really well when we did Lost. And uh, what a perfect show to really just kind of like dig into in the uh, in the two in the later 2000s. Well, not later 2000s, but in the uh, what's later 2010s, this? the later 2010s. Anyway, thank you, Alana. So um, this season, Alana and Brett and myself will be watching The Leftovers. And the way we'll do it is, is we're doing two episodes at a time until we're finished with the entirety of the three season series. So Brett, have you looked into how many episodes are in the first season? 15. There's 28 total episodes. There's 10 episodes in the first two seasons each. 28 total episodes. So that means there's only eight episodes in season three. Yeah. Wow. Okay, cool. We have 14 weeks ahead of us. And that's why I was saying it matches up with a potential calendar. Oh, yeah. Brett's got an idea about the next show already, but I'm real nervous about it. I'm nervous. But it's too early to talk about that, guys. We're talking about a great show called The Leftovers. And here's a little background on The Leftovers for me. I did not read the books. It's one book, I thought. It's the Bible. Uh, maybe it is one book. <laughs> but uh, I was all on board because I love Damon Lindelof, and I've loved Damon Lindelof since Lost. Shout out to Lost. One of those episodes uh, is going to be available. Uh, what? One of those episodes going to be available again. When, you're asking me? R- yeah. On the air, you're asking me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Can we get Ryan on that immediately? (laughs) We're trying to figure it out because right now it's like this is living on the Valley Cast channel, and um, oh, that's right. It's kind of strange because it's like if you were subscribed to the Valley Cast, you're probably you just got served a four hour masterpiece. (laughs) You got served a four hour masterpiece of some of us currently on the podcast right now watching the four hour nearly four hours Zack Snyder director's cut of the Watchmen film um but yeah it's kind of a mix up the how we're even doing this and we're trying to figure it out like I think we'll probably just have to buy another SoundCloud account and then start to use that as like this podcast that way we can have the the album art thing and the analytics and all that important stuff we'll need if this is going to be a thriving popular show or at least a thriving show the goal is i I wish we had one more screen here that was just (laughs) owen's empty apartment (laughs) (laughs) we could probably have somebody render that and just put it cut it in there 
Um, oh, yeah. And then he just disappears. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm having a great time uh, doing this again with you, Brett. Brett, this is your second time. Brett and I are veterans. Yeah, that's the that's the description <laughs> of the podcast is this is an excuse for me and you to hang out and for you to convince me to watch shows that I didn't watch. Yeah, and Brett, and so this the original spirit of the show was like someone loved it, someone hadn't seen it, and someone's never seen it. And it turns Wait, out that that's a someone really... hadn't seen it and someone never seen it. Is that what I said? That's yeah. right, Alana. Someone hadn't seen it, someone will never see it. And someone saw it. Just kidding. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, okay. For lost, we someone did have has, somebody emailing that seen never it, watched it. And someone has never seen it. And then someone uh, didn't like it. Okay. So we we tried to follow that format. And then we got interested in a bunch of other shit. And then we got really cocky and did things that you'll never hear or see of again. And uh, now we're kind of back to the format, but uh, except we're not quite following that format because I have seen the show and I love it. Alana watched up until the second season. How far into the second season did you get? Most of the way. I think I finished the second season, but and I liked the first two seasons, but um, I got really angry at it. And that's why I didn't do season three. Would so you, you say you didn't like it? Yeah, so it does fit. It does Whoa, fit. Oh shit, Great. it does fit. Alana, yeah. I didn't know you didn't like it. Um, it's not that I didn't like the filmmaking. I just thought they were fucking with our emotions too much. And I was like, all right, fuck you then. I'm not watching. I mean, it's a very compelling show. It's very incredible. Very it's compelling very season well one. Made. Very well, hold on teasing a second. you. Hold on a second. Before you get too deep into how you felt about season one. <laughs> There are some people here, including many listeners, who have not seen the show at all. Okay. So the way we'll do this is is kind of like what we did with Lost, what, which was we're not going to spoil anything. We're of not going to move of ahead. Course, of course, of course. We're not going to talk about the first season as a whole. You know, we, I haven't seen it. Because well, I don't Brent remember. hasn't seen it, and a lot of people haven't seen it. And as a matter of fact, with you saying you don't remember, I don't fucking remember. I, yeah, I don't remember details. I just remember the feeling I had after season one, because there was like a year break or whatever, and the feeling I had after season two. That's all I remember. Well, it's like, you know, what we'll find is, is and we'll really stay away from like the illusion of like how we felt about the whole thing, but... I mean, I'm just going to go out and say that I love it. But I loved Lost going into the Lost show also. So I I think it's okay for me to admit that I just absolutely loved this series. I thought it was incredible. And I think it's going to be really interesting to watch with you guys. Because, you know, I mean, it's it's fun sci-fi Lindelof, you know? And it's like, it's a good time. And if you loved Watchmen, Lindelof's Watchmen... Um, then you'll probably really enjoy this because it's very similar. I was going to ask you, what was the conversation around this show like? Because when we did Lost, you guys talked a lot about the week-to-week dialogue that I was missing out on by watching it now as opposed to when it came out. Mm. Um, I mean, we definitely were talking about it, and I think people were talking about it, and then the whole first season was like pretty buzzy. And then the second season rolled around and a lot of people got upset. Oh, like me. And, um, <laughs> and you know, and I think, and, and I totally understand why, but uh, we'll get to that eventually. But um, I think that if there were to be a weak season in this three season series, personally, I feel like two probably is, but I still love it. And uh, we're going to get to it real soon, and I'm very excited about it. But anyway, so, um, Brett, why didn't you it's... watch Leftovers? Uh, um, I don't I, I don't remember. I to- it totally went. It came and went. Yeah, because it was a short little stint. Yeah, I don't know why. I, I had no reason why I did or didn't. It just didn't happen. It premiered in on HBO. <laughs> On June 29th, 2014. Yeah, but I also hadn't seen Lost at that point. So everyone right. was talking about Lindelof's new show, and that didn't mean anything to me at that point. 
You know, I guess I I I call it a a sci-fi, but I guess it's more like a supernatural cuz the wiki is saying it's a supernatural mystery yeah, drama. I would say like yeah, spiritual fiction. Ooh. Um, <laughs> That's what my I was favorite say James everybody Brown song. Touted this as the new Lindelof show, which is great and what it is. But if I had heard it was Pete Berg's show, I would have been excited and probably did you it. not know his involvement no, at all i didn't know oh, he had anything a, to do with what it. a treat who's pete Berg? is he how many episodes does he direct um that's a good question and okay. i believe i don't know if i'm ready to answer it yet okay fair enough i like that he showed up in the first episode and then was dead by the second episode <laughs> yeah pretty much who's pete Berg? he's the director but he also was one of the guys um, he's the guy that the hugger kissed in episode two, oh. the dead guy, but he directed and produced it, but he also directed and produced, uh, Friday night lights. He did the movie and then he did the TV show, but he's done a bunch of stuff. So he's many the guy that the hugger. Kissed. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually, I've got quite a few things on. What am I looking for? Writer, director, or producer? The guy that the hugger kissed. That's the for title Pete, you're looking for. For Pete Berg? The, yeah. I want to know how many he directed. So Direct. I was wondering, because he directed the, these both of these. Well, no, if we're going to talk about what he things that he's directed. Yeah. He directed Hancock. That's right. I loved Hancock. Yeah. He directed Battleship as well. I didn't see Battleship. Is that I, there's something? There's highs and lows in his filmography. <laughs> but I love what he did. with Friday Night Lights <clears throat> as a TV show, I felt like reestablished like you, what a TV show could be. Do you oh, really want to cool. know how many episodes Peter Berg directed of The Leftovers? I was just curious if he came in, directed these two as if they did both of these as a pilot and then never directed another episode or if he actually shows up throughout or if he directed every episode. It says he directed two total episodes. Yeah, okay. That's kind of what I figured because he probably had to go make movies. Yes. He had to go make Deep Water Horizon. <laughs> um. All right. Well, Alona, what is your experience with The Leftovers? Give us a short summary. What is summary. your experience with being leftover? What is your experience with being a Thanksgiving leftover? When it first came out, I loved it, and I would like look forward to it every week. It was a treat. I was in a job that was like 24 hours a day, insane, and this was my one special treat. So I have like a real emotional connection to season one being like, I remember laying in this tiny room in this tiny bed, and there's one TV on the wall, obviously just one, but like there wasn't a lot in the room. Wait, it was where tiny. were you? We, You're I was 24 hours a day. Well, You're I in was a tiny working room with a tiny TV. I was working a long ass job, long hours job. It wasn't specific hours. It was just like you work until the shit is you know, done. You one of them long ass jobs. It's just one of those film <laughs> production jobs that are like. <laughs> I was directing and producing, and so I was just in charge of everything, and we didn't have enough people or budget or anything, so I was just working constantly, one of those. Isn't it weird that you can see the same poster in my background and Alana's <laughs> background? <laughs> <laughs> the, way it's, the way it is on my screen is, is completely wrong. Is it that... looks like Alana's sitting outside. <laughs> That's great. Um, so, Alana... Are you excited to like rewatch this show? Yeah, except it's it's it I I left the show with a bad taste in my mouth and so and it's a a very mystery, like such a mystery show. And But you don't know what's what how it ends. Nope. And like uh, you don't know. I don't Not know. Not that you didn't see it, but nobody spoiled it for you. No one spoiled it. I don't know. I don't I want to watch it to find out. But so watching through well, I again. I can tell you all how it how it ends right now. <sighs> save <laughs> us, save us. Uh, let's just jump right weeks. into that. Let's just talk about the end of it. Yeah. But that's what I feel like the whole time I'm watching it. I'm like, okay, I had to sit through this and I didn't get the answer. So just tell. I feel like I played this game already and I didn't figure out the end. So like, just tell me already. It's unfortunate, but that is how I'm feeling while I watch. But, I'm but, like anxious as fuck. Just like, all right, tell me. But are you enjoying it? I'm starting to. I'm what I'm really enjoying is 
what my mind is choosing to fill in the blanks now as compared to what happened in 2014. But I also feel like we're getting like a lot out of it too. Like even you were saying <clears throat> while we were watching this, you were like, wow, after watching the Star Wars prequels, <laughs> this is like a masterpiece. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. It's, Did you watch it, the Star Wars prequels after Twilight? Yes. And this is the why, second why time I've been doing this to yourself during quarantine. And this is the second time I've watched the Star Wars prequels. <laughs> Mine too. In like three months. Oh. I still haven't watched The Rise of Skywalker. Please still wait waiting. and let's watch it together. Yeah. Okay. We'll celebrate the end of quarantine with <laughs> what I'm told is a pretty mediocre installment in the Star Wars franchise. All right. So <clears throat> let's just jump right into the show. Because um, we, I think we've done enough explaining, and I think we've this all. This is a good. This is good for the prologue. I think it's a great up. prologue. Yeah, because we're gonna Steve, we're gonna jump around a lot. You what? didn't say what you think. You just said you like it. Oh, I loved it. I loved the show. I understand why people didn't like this or that, but I felt like this, watching this show to me felt like watching a grown up Lost. Like if Lost is like a young teen that's full of energy and. Really has all these really cool fresh ideas. Uh, then this is the grizzled, like um, adult, a, mature version of it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely feel the same mechanics at you know at work. Totally putting this thing together, which is interesting because Lost has so much of cues in it, also, and like um, Jack Bender and, and Javier and Javier. Lost and... has so much what in it? Hughes. No, uh, Carlton Cuse. Different colors. Oh. And, uh, you know, and it's such a collaboration, but you can really feel a lot of Damon Lindelof's, um, you can just feel his uh, storytelling, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what it is that about how you can really feel that in The Leftovers already, and we're only two episodes in. And if it, I mean, it's, it is masterful filmmaking, Outside of having just seen the prequels, so it's a very dramatic. <laughs> no, it shift. totally. Well, is. he's also. I mean, they've. He's like mastered the idea of like peeling the onion. Yes. Yeah. Being yeah. like hundred percent, giving you the feeling that we're all going somewhere, but you're only going to get little pieces of information. Each if week. you have yeah. that figured out and you have a really good cast, then you've got a shot at making something really good. Yeah, but not Me, just that personally. He's... Yes, you, Brett, <laughs> or Alana. In I'm a very talking small to you and I'm talking to both of y'all. I'm talking to everybody right now. Um, all right. Well, let's let's not get too deep into like off the track because we could just jump right into episode one, titled. Let's do it. Pilot. It's actually really? called Pilot. What a stupid title. And it's not, though. All these titles mean something. And I remember watching the series for the first time and getting a really, like, cool, lost-style ARG feeling about everything. What's the second episode is, like, something one, Penguin Zero? Yeah, something Penguin like One, Us Zero. Yeah. And is that because the, pink, the punching penguin? Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah, I think so. But why? I don't know. Because people's frustration I'm not that and deep anger. In the yet. <laughs> people's <laughs> frustration and anger is getting a point, and people achieving whatever, living happily, is not getting a point. I don't even like onions. You should give onions a try. Onions. <laughs> Onions. Onion. Wait, I'm trying what's, to. What's happening with your screen? What do you Steve think's is... happening with it? Steve's playing with our light. I got a I got a ring light and I'm playing with it. Uh, and as you can see, he's lighting himself. I was wondering well. how you both were changing Not at me. the same time. Because <laughs> we're in hell. Um, okay, I so the first episode is called posture. Pilot. And I remember there being like, man, you guys are in for a treat, because there's really a lot of like things coming up that were like real world things. And then HBO started to send people like stuff from the show oh steve told me about this care package he got from hbo dude hbo and i had like a thing going on when this show was on and i what, ha what did was you do to so hbo happy. To upset them. you know i don't i i don't know what i did but i wanted i wish i could do it again somehow 
because uh, I really was on their radar for leftovers marketing stuff, which was really fucking cool because I got a lot of cool stuff. And I'll show off some some things uh, that I got because um, they're fun, you know. I don't know, whatever. I loved it. I thought it was really cool. They really got me because they like uh, what was one of the oh they sent me a burner phone with the little smiley face on it. And it and it had like really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, and it had like texts from Holy Wayne. <gasps> oh, that's cool. I didn't know it had that. Yeah, and it would just be like, be mindful and never like give up your truth. And don't then, say like, any more lines of his. Brett is in the total dark. Well, whatever you know, just the kind of shit he was saying in the episode. But we'll get to that. So let's talk about pilot, and let's talk about this show, and let's talk about. Okay. Because remember, Brett, when we did Lost, there were people not watching the show and just listening to the yeah, podcast. Yeah, so it starts with what uh, appears to be the rapture. Correct. Am I wrong? And t- was it, were they trying to be like, no, no, it's not the rapture. It's something else. I mean, there's nothing Both. else to call it. When people okay. when this show came out, people were like, hey, are you watching that rapture show? But I feel like no one in the show is talking about that. Yeah, well, I didn't. Well, I mean. I didn't perceive it that way. Well, um, there Christopher Eccleston's character. Um, shout out to one of the Doctor great Who. Doctor Who's. Wait, is the Rapture a bad thing or a good thing? Well, the Rapture is like all it's bad the... for the sinners, Lana. Yes. Okay, because I'm not like a. Well, it's bad for person. the. If you're a good Christian, you have you to are... be saved. You well, it depends on saved. which version of Christianity you're you're uh, subscribed to. But pick your poison. When I grew up, you had to t- you had to accept Jesus Christ into your heart, and then mm-hmm. when the rapture came, you got to take off, and everyone else who didn't got stuck. Wait, here let me write this horsemen down. of the apocalypse. What now? You write this down? Yeah, I gotta write it down. <laughs> this is important information, Alana. Oh, and, and G- Jesus oh, yeah. Christ. Um, Cooked rice. But if I remember correctly, if I remember Sunday school correctly, during the time before the actual revelations apocalypse, you could still accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and be yeah, saved. Yeah, you could repent. So it does sound like it's referencing that in the first two. Well, I mean, the whole thing is like, it certainly seems like a rapture concept, right? Cause like the rapture is literally kind of what happens in, in this show is just people just kind of like are taken to, you know, heaven or whatever. And uh, I guess what I was confused because I didn't feel like the show was drawing. Well, no, but yeah, that's the thing. It's like, that's where this whole thing is kind of like interesting. Cause you're not sure if that's what it is or not. I and, think the show's referencing it a lot. I think well, a Eccleston, lot of people are well, thinking the, that. Like I was going to say, like Christopher Eccleston's character says... Um, These it guys wasn't, are shitty. He says it wasn't the rapture. You guys are out of your minds. Like it wasn't the rapture. So it just seems like there's a lot of people that all have... Well, there's have... a lot of... If I remember correctly, we should get someone who actually knows what they're talking about. Uh, a rapture? You're talking about getting a rapturologist? We need a rapturologist, but if I, I think there's Owen. a certain number of things that have to happen before the rapture. Oh, well, really? No, Alana, Owen's a raptorologist. Oh, yeah. excuse me. We'll save that for the Jurassic <laughs> World watch one. That one Owen's chomping at the bit for. Literally, he's chomped through. Just like a dinosaur. I do feel like we lost Owen in the rapture. <laughs> Before we started this podcast. So anyway, He's the only one. So two percent of the world's population disappears. That's what the show. That's where you're thrown into in this show. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, you so get. That's why they think that um, it's not the rapture because it would have been more people. Right. Oh. Um, okay. But uh, and then we're we are thrown three years later into a place called Mapleton, New York. New York. And we are introduced to the fine piece of ace, Mr. Justin Justin Trudeau. (laughs) Steve is saying that because the whole episode long, I was like, he's so hot. Oh, please. Like, you're the first to discover that Justin Thoreau is hot as fuck. I'm just saying why you're emphasizing I'm going to put out there, like, hot or not, I don't know if I would care as much about this show if it wasn't Justin Thoreau. Yeah. I feel like he's bringing a lot. And, he's also and, such a good actor. And by the way, he is the perfect 
Harry person Potter. for this role. Oh. Mm-hmm. And he's just absolutely, he's, this is his like greatest thing that he's done, I think. Mm. I, I feel did, like your uh, highness is number one. But this <laughs> get out of here with your highness. <laughs> I, thought, I was like, great, he's going to be all Tropic Thunder on me. And by the way, this handsome gentleman in the, in the uh, loose sweatpants, um, Justin Thoreau, um, wrote Tropic Thunder. Yeah. And Iron Man 2. And Zoolander 2. <laughs> and Brett. Uh-huh, go for it. No, you showed though. up and was he in Tomb Raider too? Yeah, one of those. Yeah. Anyway, he's great and he's perfect and he's so great in the show. And, and he was in one of the um, Charlie's Angels in the two thousands, wasn't he? Yeah, Full Throttle. Dude, when we were doing promo, when we were doing press for Your Highness, I got to to meet Justin Thoreau, and I oh, can tell yeah. you that he is as dreamy in person. Ugh. Uh, and he's absolutely fantastic. Uh, Did you consider he's great kissing in this. his He really lips? is like, he, yeah, I, I really was trying to think, I was like picturing other people in it, like Jason Bateman and like a few people. And I'm like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't care. Right. Somehow I care because it's him. Well, he just seems like the kind of guy that'll just take care of you. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. All right. I just well, listen. I I wanna. I it's like I wanna watch what is gonna happen to him. Okay. So Brett, you you yes. loosely know knew what the show was about, right? Before coming into it, uh, just that much. The it's okay. the Rapture show. So having seen the pilot episode, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts? Like, what did you think of that opening? Well, here's first of all, I I watched the pilot last week. And then watch episode All right, I quit. Today. We got it. I'm not doing this. No, show no, anymore. it's great because it gave me a week <laughs> to digest. Um, I because uh, we thought it, we were. It was almost this. like with when we were watching Lost. I was trying to figure everything out and piece everything together. The experience of watching the pilot of Leftovers was the complete opposite. Where I was, I I made my peace with the fact that I wasn't going to know much, and that I was going to have a lot of questions, and. In that, I really enjoyed it. And was just like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on with this guy uh, in the darkness with uh, trying to think of his name. The the guy, the senator, he's from Friday Night Lights. I was trying to think of his character name. I'm not going to get there. Boy Senator? Garrity. Something Garrity. Buddy Garrity. Which character is he? He's the senator that gets in the van with the kid from Kaboom. I don't know anyone's actual name. I just know what they were in. Wait, what what scene are you talking about? Um in the first like 20 minutes of the show, the senator is dropped off in a car and then he gets in a van with a, Oh, the senator with a man. who's going to the hug man. Oh, yeah. got it. Got it. Yeah. Now we're back. Yeah. I was now trying not to spoil that it was Hug Man. No, you can do that because this is about the first two episodes. So uh, we're just that not talking guy, about he was Buddy Garrity in Friday Night Lights. Okay, the guy mm-hmm. driving. I don't the remember truck. the original point of this, the but guy, oh guy. yeah, when he went to see that guy, and then he came out and he was all his uh, <laughs> spirit had been lifted. I was like, I don't know what's going on. I actually, unlike Lost, I really enjoyed that I didn't know what was going on. I'm like, I'm gonna enjoy the process of learning what's happening. And what do you do? You have any theories? Um, I mean, who doesn't like a good hug? You know what I mean. <laughs> I think maybe we just we we don't hug enough, and it took two percent of the now. population going away to learn that a simple hug is really all you need. All you need is hugs. All you need is hugs. <laughs> need is hugs. Um, hugs. That so okay. So, but what do you think happened to everyone that disappeared? Um, sorry to get to give you get you right away with a gotcha question. Get your gooey. Yeah. By the way, Alana, Steve does this a lot. Oh. Where he'll he'll ask a question he knows the answer to. And then sort of lords over you and the fact that he knows and you don't Cause know. Because it's fun. It's part of the podcast. It, we, are, we are following the format in that <laughs> yes, regard. Yes, yes, we are. Um, 
what I think has happened is the a- aliens have abducted a sample size of humanity. And they're testing them to see where we are as a society. Whoa. And if we're ready to advance into the interstellar existence. Hell yeah. I don't I If it's that, I'll be sad. <laughs> That's the best I got. Okay, so what do you what do you really think is it's it is it's 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 it's, it's, it's the it's, rapture it's, it's, and it's, it's, and it's. and uh, only two percent of people had it figured out right. Only two percent read the Bible correctly and got saved properly. Oh, I love that. That's great. To wow. get taken. Um, <laughs> that's great, Alana. What do you think happened to everybody? The first time I watched, I thought, I don't remember. I thought all all sorts of stuff. What I think this time, this time I, for the first time, had a thought like, what if uh, either all the people who stayed are people who had wished others would be gone at some point, like that mom wished her kid didn't exist, or all the people who left are people who had wished to be away from all of this at some point or something like along that line. Like maybe there was some subtle thing that someone really wanted. And if you've ever really wanted that when this moment came, I don't know. Kind of like in Labyrinth when the, when Sarah's like, I wish the Goblin King would take you away. And then the Goblin King takes her little baby brother, Toby away. Sure. But not just like any wish. Like there's a, a specific, type of thing that all of these one two percent of the population had wanted like and a so, christmas wish and so, yeah like a christmas christmas wish and so that you happened. think santa claus took all these people away <laughs> i don't think santa claus i just think they like you know i mean i'm for went it away went to heaven or whatever the they're suggesting alana is. what is the connection between the leftovers and santa claus i mean i think the 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 sci-fi in the leftovers is the magic of santa claus which season does Krampus come in? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I will, the one thing I wanted to say, though, Steve, the difference between Leftovers and Lost is when I was watching Lost, a lot of the mysteries, I did feel like I, I didn't believe that they knew where they were going. They were uh. like laying seeds and they're like, we'll figure that out later. This, I feel like everything is very is, is more deliberate. Yeah, I feel that for sure. And purposeful. Yeah. I, I'm glad to hear you say that, Brett, because it's absolutely true. I like to be right. So <laughs> so let's, let's talk a little bit door. about uh, the I'll be disappointed. The I'll be disappointed what? if this is all like a religion thing, frankly. Okay. I'll feel like annoyed my, that I got sucked in. My favorite thing about the pilot is the one thing they tell you not to do when you're making. I mean, I guess it's a movie, but it applies here. Is they're like, don't kill an animal. You can't open the box office if you kill an animal. And they start the show by killing an animal and then end the show by just murdering a lot of animals. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. And that's, it seems like a deliberate move to make people upset. What do you think's going on with these dogs? I mean, can you really trust dogs? You know, they're all... <laughs> I mean, I loved it when that one creepy twin was like, Dude, it's like the dogs that witnessed someone disappear. Like, all oh, went, yeah, I they love went that. crazy. It's just, you know. I love that. I, I'm i the dogs are the dogs, but the deer is really confusing to me. Yeah. Because yeah. it like thrashed up his place and stuff. What's going on? I, I, yeah. I love when he's like, were you in my house last night? <laughs> I wish I didn't pull that clip. I wish I had. I know, yeah. I know. That's a really good one because didn't you expect the deer to be like, no? <laughs> like, did you expect I, the deer I, to say something? I just was. What's funny is watching two today and then going and pulling clips from one, I had completely forgotten about the deer. And yeah. so. It didn't. It didn't have a place in two, which made me almost like pay more attention to it when I was pulling clips. Because I pulled the clip of it like dying in the front of his car, and then I deleted the clip. Listen, it's I don't want to spoil anything for you, but there are quite a few deer yet okay. to come. Well, of course, there's there's what twelve? How many deer does Santa have? 
<laughs> There's Dasher. Okay. Dancer. Da- da- Pantser. Pr- Prancer. Pantser. Vixen. Dixon. Donner. Cupid. Dixon, Donner. Bon- Bonnie. Bluther. Sean. Cupid, Donner and Blitzen. There's one Truther. Cra- Craig. And Rudolph. What about Craig? K-R-E-G-G. He's not a reindeer. What if... <laughs> He's just a deer. Oh, right. Anyway. Craig can't play in the reindeer games either. All right. Um, the guilty remnant. What's the guilty remnant? <sighs> These motherfuckers in white smoking ciggies. I know. I couldn't get a piece of paper pulled out of my printer, but I was going to write, I miss Owen. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, very great. <laughs> this That's one of those things. What does it say on the wall when she, in the beginning when she's like brushing her teeth? It's like, uh, ah, shit, here, I'll look it up. Says, it's like we will not be forgotten. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Uh, Everything sucks. Be depressed. The world sucks. We hate you. Um, I don't know, but it's 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 almost like I don't know what their point or purpose is. But there's an aspect of that group that I believe would happen in something like this, where it's like people whose brains can't process what's happened, so they're like, let's do, let's let's you know. Let's follow some yes. something else. Let's mm. follow like these people, you know, I, I, I don't know. Well, because it's, it's like, almost like people just are suddenly like, OK, well, I guess magic is real now. Or I guess some I guess supernatural things are real now because I because it's it's it doesn't make any other sense other than it's some kind of supernatural f- metaphysical. Yeah, I mean, like, look at what we're going through now. It's like. It would right. be hard to fathom one year ago today going, the entire world is going to not go outside. Right. And it's like, oh my God, why? Is there like a, is like the bubonic plague? Is <laughs> right. It's like, no, and it's is like that a, really going to save them? Yeah. I'm like, some people think it's just a bad cold, but everybody's staying inside and everybody believes in it. <laughs> right. If you told me that a year ago, you know, I would have been like, well, yeah, that would be crazy, but that's never going to happen. Right. Yeah. But now, you know, you watch kind of the different how the different people are reacting to just this, you know, the coronavirus, which is so much milder. Yeah, I think. Well, I would say it's a lot. It's a lot more normal than people just vanishing off the face of the earth. Yeah. Um, you know, people have to like cope in their own way, I guess, and they have to. You know, I think the GR is a a, f- a group of people who are coping as best they can i am interested in the connection of uh justin thoreau's wife being a part of it and how she ended up there and yeah how crazy is that and why it's Great so story. compelling it's Incredible very story it's such a good story and all the dialogue and fucking justin thoreau he's just like killing it yep um i want to make sure i didn't downplay corona i did compare it to the rapture <laughs> I don't want to get any backlash for downplaying Corona. I hope I didn't downplay um, it. I mean, it but it's not the same as two percent of the population what's... disappearing. My question to you is: My question: What is going on with Kevin's son, who um, is uh, Tom, the guy from Kaboom? Yes. What is up uh, with Tom? Have you guys seen the movie Kaboom about the end of the world? <laughs> No, that doesn't even. Sound. It, he has it long, sounds like you're making hair. up a fake movie. No, no, no. It's it's very like if you if if like strange. ten years ago you were like Dean Devlin is making a movie called Kaboom. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. It's 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 along those lines. Juno Temple's in it. Oh, I, I love Juno it's, Temple. Yeah, it's really worth watching. I like me a JT. I don't want to upset anybody, but I would say it's it's be- it's a better watch than the Twilight Saga. <laughs> well, that's not hard to believe. Um, so, what's going on with Tom? See, that's the thing is, I don't know what's going but on I with have, Holy I have Wayne. I'm used to not knowing. In my head, I'm like, I like the way that it's almost like a, the difference between this and Lost, and why I say like Lost felt like. They were just doing a lot of stuff and they would figure it out later. This feels so deliberate. Is stuff like that where I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Like we have Justin Thoreau as our central character. And then all the mysteries seem to be like building off of Justin Thoreau. Because we even find out like the the is she a congresswoman or Yeah, she's like the mayor. 
yeah so she's with his father and his father freaked out and went crazy it's like he's like a central nexus of all of the mystery yeah unlike like jack wasn't the central point of every mystery and lost but right. I, I feel like it's a really interesting way to make sure that we as the audience know like they're being very deliberate and they're they have a big plan for this because they're making they're having us follow this one character and he's seeing this crazy deer and he's seeing this guy in a truck that may or may not exist uh shooting dogs and i don't know it's like so everything i'm just like ooh, that's interesting that's his son i don't know what's going on but i'm okay not knowing right now are you trying to be eagle-eared with all the like newscast stuff only the pickle one <laughs> Is that because I sent you the clip or whatever? Oh, no, I had already pulled it. Oh, of course you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had definitely already pulled that one. I can't wait. Um, Let's hurry up and get to clips. I, uh, I'm, I, I'm really enjoying watching it, so I'm not looking too hard. Alana, you should know, I just let the show sort of wash over me. Yeah. I don't try to find the secrets. Well, that's how I and felt about season one also. And holds my fire on them each week. I feel like I'm in your boat for season one. Or I was in your boat for season one. So we'll see how, if that's different. Aloha. Okay. Well, I don't know how to do that yet. You Down by the video camera thing? Down by the river bend? You click the arrow next to it and you go to virtual background. All right. It's not fine. an improvement, Alana. Oh. Oh, man. Oh. Um, we get dance thoughts? I don't know. Should I check? <laughs> Let's just discover together. We, um, need to, we need to know if we have dance thoughts. Who knows, man? We'll see. Um, we're, we're, we're not there yet. We're not to it. dance thoughts yet. God damn it. Hold your damn horses, Brett. Hold your damn thoughts, Brett. What did you think about the statue, the creepy departure statue oh yeah <laughs> with the baby and the lady going bye 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 baby i feel i, I again i'm like yeah that's something someone would do yeah there would be totally. someone who who designs that statue and is very proud of that's it. the other thing about the show the cool thing is is like you're like this is what people would really do this is what would really happen yeah. probably yeah it's a really smart look at what might really happen and that's what i considered the show essentially which was just kind of a character study about how people would react to two percent of the world's population just suddenly disappearing i feel the same way it's yeah very we good. were we were re-watching scream the first scream movie yeah. and i was like the first kid who got killed. Wait, the first Scream whole... movie is called Scream, and the second one's called Screams, right? No. <laughs> I just fell for that entirely. And then the, the last one's called Just a Few More Screams. <laughs> Screams Resurrection. Screams Erection. Um, but I was saying, in Scream, when Drew Barrymore and her boyfriend were, were murdered and then strung up in the tree... That would be it for that town. Like school would be canceled. No one would be allowed to go outside. Right, right. <laughs> very like laissez faire. Yeah, everyone... like, well, let's have a party at this kid's house, and it, it would be so. Everyone like, would need deep therapy. Everybody's making jokes at school. I'm like, no, no, no. Everyone would be very, very sad. Brett, did you see um, deep therapy? So I do feel like they're being authentic in this regard, and I like that. Um. Yeah. No. Totally. They totally are, and uh, part of why. Lindelof is so magical. He's really good at that. And I think he he knows he's just really good at writing um dialogue that would otherwise be really hard to believe from other actors and he, potentially Yeah, there are write. so many moments where I just looked at Steve and I was like this dialogue's incredible. He just Did he write this how, episode? Um yeah, it was written by Damon Lindelof and Tom Parada. Oh, Tom. 
Oh, Tommy Boy. I believe he's the author of The Leftovers. Yeah. Oh, I was going to ask you about the book. So you haven't read them? No. But I do know that the the show. <laughs> you just scared me. <laughs> oh, shit. Who scared you? The shit out of me. Who scared you? James, do you see right here? Yes. This door just creeped open and Jamie's head <laughs> popped in. Hi, Jamie. Hi. We need a few more minutes. <laughs> bad news about keeping this uh, podcast to an hour. Well, we're almost done. We're at 45. Right. We can push through. Let's go to episode two. Okay, great. <laughs> we're recording Happy this Mother's on Day, Mother's Jamie. Day. <laughs> so, um, Okay. The parade happens, and the guilty remnant comes out and gets their asses kicked. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then we, we are introduced to Nora. To guilty remnant. What? Nora Durst. We're introduced to Nora Durst, one of my favorite characters, if not maybe my favorite character in the whole Agreed. damn thing. You get a lot more of her in two, right? Yeah, she's so yeah. great. That's not a spoiler because her image is in the like thumbnail for the film for the series Spoilers. and then episode two is like um like an respect assault on Alana. what's that he said to Alana's respect the to format yes please respect the format um we, we there's an assault on holy wayne's compound and people are just getting shot to death oh we episode two now yes okay episode two is called penguin one us zero and was also directed by Peter Berg, so that must be it for him. Does, do you think the show carries the same visual cadence from here on? Yeah, yeah. and in some cases, even more so. Okay, good. But I'll miss Peter Berg. We'll all miss him. Both as the character and as the director. Who do you miss more, Peter Berg or Javier Grigio, Mark's watch? I you don't have to Owen answer that yet. More than any of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, did you notice that the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, Explosives, and Cults is the name of that bureau that was attacking? Holy no, compound. did they show us that, that as was a name? The, the he, people we started the episode with, the yes. woman, and, the man and woman. Yes. Where did they show us that that's their name? It was abbreviated on the, on the suit. Potentially in that office. Oh, so are you spoiling it now? No, it says it here on the dang synopses. <laughs> All right, whatever. It's best not to question. Anyway, how not. cool is that? There's like a bureau where they where cults is part of their. That's very cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I can imagine in that world, cults would need to be. There's probably a much rise more. in cults after the 2%. rise in cults. Massive rise in cults. I saw rise in cults open for Death Clock. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Holy Wayne's place gets shot up, and all these uh, sex slave teenage Asian girls. Well, we think they're sex. I like think that's what powers girls. his hugs. <laughs> Wayne claims to need to have sex with teenage Asian girls to recharge his ability to supposedly hug people's pain this away. This is spoilers. He never said this. They're no, that's only no, they said it. They, they said, said it in, in the, the office. Beginning. In the bureau, the they're bureau. guessing this. They're he not saying the, it. The guy when he's no, reading that, off they said the that's what his claims are. Dossier. That's what they know about Holy Oh, Wayne. I thought that was yeah. someone's claims. No, not no, Wayne's that's claims. what they've they've been researching him. All and right, been, all right. They've been trying to get him. But what I've what I've learned from spending time with Lindelof on Watchmen and Lost is I do feel like when he throws something out there that's like this is ridiculous and seems like you're meant to believe like oh he was just wanted to have sex with underage Asian girls at some point he's gonna tie that back in to be like no no that's actually what powers him <laughs> in yeah. this world that is correct <laughs> I feel like he always throws the like uh, the red herring out there as if it's meant to be well, ignored. I, I'm really excited to watch this with you guys because <laughs> after watching Watchmen. You know, you really just, you see how much Lindelof has grown as a yeah. writer, creator, director, what have you. 
And mm. Leftovers is certainly a precursor to that. And you think he, he struggles to watch Lost now? I'm certain of it, especially because it got him to like leave social media for years Lost? and years and years. Yeah. Shit. Oh, that's sad. Because people just wouldn't leave him alone about the end of Lost, and then they started being a shit about uh, Prometheus. And Tell him I love the end of Lost. I'll tell him. I'll tell him myself. <laughs> And um, I own Prometheus in 3D. Dude, I just battled radius. with... Do you know Roxy Stryer? She, name sounds familiar. She's She's been in a bunch of stuff with us, and she's a nerdy gal, and she's great. And her and I battled on some Rotten Tomatoes thing over Lost. Oh, okay. We had a Lost battle. I thought you were going to say over Prometheus. No, no, <laughs> over Lost. And uh, I don't want to talk too much about it because Alana hasn't seen it yet. But anyway, we're getting off track here. Um, okay. So many things happen in this episode, including learning a little bit more about Holy Wayne's <laughs> thing, where he feels he recharges his abilities, to, his ability to hug people's pain away, uh, using teenage Asian girls. So, like, you that's really that get... Peaches song, isn't it? <laughs> is there a song like that? Yeah, her song is "Fuck the Pain Away." Ah, oh, got it. Okay. Oh yeah, I thought that was a Rise and Cult song, but you're right. But isn't it kind of fun how Tom saves Christine from Holy Wayne's compound by killing by that shooting guy? the guy in the neck? Yeah, and it's like your dad's a cop. Yeah, like you're doing some real bad shit, Tommy boy. It's insane. It's crazy. And then the moment with him and the hugger guy really is crazy. The, his mystery, Holy Wayne. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he's just, I mean, what do you get? What's the vibe you get from Holy Wayne right now, Brett? Well, that's the thing is I don't trust him, but then in not trusting him, I feel like I should probably trust him. <laughs> Same. Alana, do you remember this story? I didn't see enough. There's no end to the story of him, I believe. Well, do you remember the season one stuff with Holy Wayne? Vaguely. I feel the same way now after the first two episodes as I remember feeling. Okay. But do you remember the 25th night of September? <laughs> um, save it for your V for Vendetta podcast. He seems <laughs> that He seems joke. like a classic cult leader. <laughs> like, he really does just seem like a, especially with the like keeping women and having sex with he them. He needs thing. to he has like a certain amount uh, very power seem very powerful seem scary, seem manipulative, also seem very truth-telling and seem like someone you want to be around and who's going to get you somewhere, but also you're terrified to be around. That's cult leader. And weird sex stuff. Got it. Kevin had a weird dream with uh, his daughter's friend. Oh, in, yeah. In his bedroom, in his boudoir, leading him out into the snow where his dog killing buddy is shooting at a guilty remnant, it seems. What and his that ex-wife, dream? I think. I don't uh, know, but I've only ever seen that girl play these types of roles. <laughs> I know. It makes me think that that is what she is really but, like. But can yeah. I be honest? This is the first time I've seen her. Like, like this was the first time I had seen her. Oh, really? Her. So I was like, wow, she's so good. And then I saw her in other things. Which, uh, which totally is like that character. <laughs> so it's like I'd seen her in a couple of things, and then I like the other girl, his daughter from Death. I Note. love her. She's great. From what? What is she from? Death, Death Note. Oh, Death Note. The Death oh. Note movie. I don't think I've seen that. Oh man, we gotta watch Death Note. Didn't we start watching it? It's the one with Willem Dafoe as that demon, and they <coughs> write they write the a lot names. of people. Oh yeah, I saw like that. It. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. A lot of that. people don't like it. She's I in that. Yeah, but I really like it. This was my first I time really seeing like her movie. when I watched this show. Um, I like that movie. That was a good movie. I don't like Death horror Note? movies, but I liked that. Uh, let's see. So Kevin, we see, we finally meet Kevin Garvey Senior, the former police chief. Yeah, and we re we learn that he kind of went nuts, and it seems like um, well, we learned that in the first episode. In the second episode, we hear him talking. When we to see him running wild something. through the backyard naked. Right, but yeah. then you talk. Then they talk a little more about uh, how Kevin Junior has basically taken over his father's job. 
Well, we already knew that too, because somebody called in episode one, the first interaction he has, somebody says, he introduces himself by his name and she goes, didn't you go crazy? Right, right. And he's He's like, like, oh no, that was my dad. Yeah, so we know. But then he was like, at the home, he was like, how's my house? And then he said, how's my job? Yeah. Yeah. So um, there's a tension, it seems, between them. And there's also, man, you really hope that that maybe he's okay but then he starts just like literally talking to people in the room i still hope he's okay there i'm hoping it's some kind of supernatural thing and that it's not just gibberish well is that was that what you think it is alana yes brett what do you think it is uh that's interesting i don't know i i just thought he was crazy i thought (laughs) he just broke i think that what that's what you're meant to believe is that yeah. he's just basically crazy, but who is knows? that he's a basic bitch? It's a it's a Lindelof show. We'll never we won't know until we'll until we know. Um, but it is interesting nonetheless. And then um, Jill and Amy, Jill is Kevin's daughter. Um, they see Nora at the coffee shop, and then she's got a gun in her purse. Ooh, now that's some soap opera drama going on there. What's she got a gun for? And she has the coolest job for someone watching this she show. She have a pretty cool job if you're watching this show. Yeah, all your like. That, but if that was your real job, that would suck. No, so not in real bad. life. But like, give me more Nora as <laughs> job the, while I'm watching. The coffee mug off the table. Yeah, like a oh, cat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was cool. Yeah, Very she kind of cool. doesn't give a fuck, and she's she's a great character that I. But she's I really also enjoy. kind of acting and leaning into it because she had a whole sob story about mm-hmm. her family, but also I'm and sure she speech. does feel that way. That speech. Was That's what so I'm saying. Good. The speech that was so good. Um, and then they follow Nora to uh her client where she's. We find out what she does. And it seems like they're taking some really strange questionnaire in order to be eligible for the uh, <laughs> government the, money. The departure because your kids debt. Yeah. There's like a departed. departure fund or some or like a de- what do they call it? They called it a. It's government money. Yeah, it's which there totally would be. It's like there a life totally insurance. Would be, and uh, and I love that. It seems like the question she's asking. She's like, these are going to be really weird. Some of them are going to be strange. But it's totally because like they're probably they're trying to find a pattern. They're trying pattern. to find like oh the people that were taking all right. did this. They had all... they all had a gluten allergy or they all had this. <laughs> they all watched too much porn. Yeah, <laughs> they all went to Brazil. <laughs> they all went to Brazil. Yeah, I love Obviously. that question because it's totally like that means that they're zeroing in on some lead where maybe them yeah. having visited Brazil might have something to do with it, which is yeah. so fun because it's like. That this I like the idea that two percent of the population watched too much porn. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that two percent of the population slept with too many or too few people, right? Or were yeah. ju- or were a dick or something or whatever it is. But I just love the world building in this show because truly, if you're like paying attention to the little radio broadcasts and like it's you know so you're good. really listening to things like that, you're really learning about this world where. We're, we're kind of focused on, obviously, Kevin and, and the things in his life, and he seems to be the central character of the show. Um, so we're not really going to get, like, a lot of the government, science world stuff there. But you know it's there, and you know it might come across Kevin's, you know, journey, and that's when you get a little taste of, like, how the world is handling this this two percent thing, and it's really interesting stuff, and I it makes me really excited. It's it's also a thing that I think Lindelof does very well, the world building, so well. Yeah, it's incredible. Um. Okay. So, and then um, they saw we saw what Nora's job is, which is super rad, and then um, and that the little daughter and her friend are like fucking up. Also, it says here in the in the description or in this like synopses that we learn that Nora is the sister of that um, Matt, the guy that's like the priest that's handing out all the flyers. We just see them hog. We don't learn their brother and sister yet. It says here that they it says here that that we should know that from this episode. Christopher. Yes. Christopher Eccleston. I don't think so. I think we learn it after. 
Um, and then it says Meg has been living in the Guilty Remnants Pledge House for several weeks and frustrated by how long it's taken oh, for man. her how to become a member. Oh, man. How great is Liv Tyler? She's so great. Very is she great. like the adult version of a manic pixie dream girl? <laughs> yes. She's what happens when a manic pixie dream girl grows up. <laughs> oh, she's so delightful. <laughs> she is. She's a delight. And so what do you think about her whole thing with the guilty remnant? I think that I think that they did it. I don't know what the purpose of it all is. Yeah. They did, they did a good job casting her boyfriend or husband or i just like hate <laughs> yeah him. Me i know too. i know you I'm like yeah him. i'd want to get away from that guy too dude when he's singing in the car you're like oh god just crash seems, every second he's on screen he seems <laughs> awful yeah even his hair yeah his look all of it it's just all right it, it, i don't need to know what she's trying to get away from because I'm satisfied with her wanting to get, just get away from him. Let's do really quick closing thoughts on the first two episodes. Then we'll do clips. Then we'll do emails. And then we'll get out of here. How's that sound? Yeah. That sounds like a podcast. Brett loves it. <laughs> All right, Brett. Closing thoughts on the first two episodes of The Leftovers. Are you in, baby? Are you buckled up? Yeah, I'm definitely in. I, uh, I you know, like I said, I'm. I'm. I. I feel very like common it casual it's like a vacation walk <laughs> yeah lost i felt very worked up i really enjoyed uh being on the island but overall the mystery stressed me out this i feel like i'm i'm coming at it very differently so i feel i i'm i'm at peace with it all and there hasn't been like a walkabout episode yet which was locked yeah I, I guess i say all that and we're really early in this you just wait man there's quite a few incredible episodes in this series and one in particular i cannot wait till we get to which i can't really remember what season it is but and that's the I'm other so thing excited because so few episodes i feel like all the mysteries are going to come hard and fast yeah yeah uh. well, you, you basically get you do get a lot which is really great about the show i'm really i i am i was really impressed by that at the end of the day but not without putting too much out there but um something i wanted to get get across really quick is that I don't remember much about this show. Like I remember certain storylines and I'm remembering things and I'm piecing things together. But for the most part, it's kind of like when I rewatched lost, like there were a lot of things. Mm -hmm. This is my first rewatch of the leftovers. So it's really like a chance for me to kind of like take a step back from discovering this show and really letting everything unfold in like a mystery kind of, you know, in the onion way, like Brett was saying. But now I kind of remember things, so I get to sit back and kind of like, you know, I'm even more chill than Brett is right now, um, which is really exciting. But I'm very excited about it. But um, yes, very excited. Love that we're rewatching it. It feels really cool. I cannot wait till we get to some of the better episodes, or the other episodes, not better episodes, but some. No of pressure, but my brother in law is rewatching Lost right now. Whoa, really? Yeah. I tried to get quarantine. Alana to jump into watching Lost. You what? Well, save it for the podcast, guys. <laughs> what you know, now we're on this Valley Cast Network. Well, Feels like we should go again. I did this Lost battle, and I was ride. like, Alana, let's watch Lost. And she's like, no, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready. No, 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 no. no. I said, we're, we are not even halfway through Star Wars, the series yet, and we're doing Leftovers. Let's finish something, and then we can watch it. I've been asking uh, I was for looking years, for the next book I want to read, and I was reading synopsis, and one, the first line was, it's Lost meets Gossip Girl. And I was like, no, I don't have to read anymore. Like, I, I'm definitely going to read that. <laughs> oh my I was like, gosh. I don't even know what that means. That's, wow. Those are two very different things, and I'm excited. Um, Alana, closing thoughts on these two episodes. And um, are I you excited to go I'm through? I'm excited. I'm more angry at the things that bothered me this time. <laughs> like, I'm... I'm just annoyed as fuck at the guilty remnant. I'm like, you guys are just being assholes all the time. I don't like it when people are assholes to themselves, when they make themselves feel bad for no reason, seemingly. So that's weighing, weighing on me. But besides Ooh, wait, that, holy weighing, that's on holy you. weighing on me. <laughs> but besides that, I'm buckled up. I'm in, I cannot wait to get to season three and I can't wait to... Because season three is completely uncharted territory. For yes. You. Like, and you're pretty sure you watched all of season two? Pretty sure. We'll find out. We'll, we'll find, find out. out. But wait, wait, let me finish. That's but... the mystery of this podcast. That is the mystery <laughs> of this podcast. Well, there's several mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I I think it's particularly cathartic to watch this right now. Like I think there are some movies and shows that are too much about weird things happening in the world where it doesn't feel cathartic. It just feels depressing to watch while in quarantine. Like it's too similar. But I think this is similar enough in that the world is just totally different in a way that you've Mm -hmm. never experienced before with the entire world. But it's not as extreme as the complete mystery of 2% of the population disappearing. So I feel like because our situation feels milder in shock, um, it's cathartic to watch right now. Well, I Yeah, I think the biggest difference is like we, as a society, I think we all believe that everything will go back to normal eventually. Yeah, exactly. That, you know, we'll find the cure, blah, blah, blah. With this, it's like, you know, you just, you have to, some groups think everything will go back to normal and some groups think that it never will. Yeah. You know, and I think that's a big differentiator. What if they're just all on that Mars planet with Captain whatever, what's his name? The blue boy? Captain Dr. Manhattan? What if all, everyone, all oh, the yeah. 2% what if they're on, just, they're on Europa, you mean? Yeah, they all if just went to Europa. If leftovers dovetails into Lost, I'll be really excited. <laughs> <laughs> um all right well let's uh let's get into clips how about that does that sound good everybody hi i'm so excited let's do it uh. we're gonna get a ding uh. on youtube we're gonna get a ding cue on- it up <laughs> <laughs> cue it up <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> I hadn't heard that one in a while. I was listening. I was listening to the to the clip. We did the wave. Yeah, yeah Brett, we join. Trying. Whose whose hand this are you doing? This is not entertaining for anyone listening to the podcast. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but it's cool because we've right. never had video. Before. I'm really excited about the clips because Owen said we wouldn't find any clips. I know Owen. Owen's so wrong because we got quite a few good ones. So Brett, I'm gonna go through yours first. This one, this first one's called Dad. Yeah. Want to set it up? It's from the beginning of this this program. All right. Well, here we go. Here's Brett's clip called Dad. That's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's my dad. <laughs> is that is that what Schwarzenegger's kid or? Uh, Sylvester so Stallone's, Stallone's kid, kid says. says in the new Judge in Demolition Man. New Demoli- Jesus, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> That's a great clip, Brett. Great that was start. special for Chris McCaleb. This is a, this is. I'm already feeling like we've got a great start to the show here. Uh, I'm not worried about the clips as much anymore. Okay, so here we go. Next clip is called Pickle. You want to set this one up? This is the one we both wanted. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. Leave it as long as you wanted. Oh no! Okay, even in the even in the other batch. Right. Oh no! Because he says I just made an executive decision and moved moved forward with my life. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate that. Here's the clip. This is Dusty Bob, and this one goes out to Boone, who lost his lovely Elise at the Cracker Pickle three years ago today. Elise, we don't know where you are. We sure do hope there's pickles up there. <laughs> <laughs> the cracker pickle. Jeez. Like a Cracker Barrel or something? Yeah, that's not a the, no. No one's gonna stop at that. <laughs> we sure hope there are pickles wherever you are. I'd stop there, especially they got we got teriyaki pickles, we got pineapple pickles, we got yeah. sweet and salty butter pickles. You're actually making me want to eat some pickles, right? Yeah. All right. Next clip is called Choke. Got a set up here, Brett. I don't remember. It's, Great. I know which scene it is. Here it comes. So, I mean, are you going to choke me or what? <laughs> I told Steve we should have pulled that clip, and he goes, I'm sure Brett did. <laughs> That's the kind of confidence that ladies respond to, guys. <laughs> you want to get some weird stuff done in bed. That's how you got to come. <laughs> All right. The next clip is called Clown. Oh, yeah. This doesn't need a setup. Uh, she always says the phrase, the kids love no her. fucking clowns. <laughs> Okay, let's play it again. Let's play it again. What's up with the clown? Uh, she always says the phrase, the kids love no her. No fucking clowns. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> no fucking 
fucking clown. Jesus that is Christ. such a good clip. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Brett. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> this next clip is called House. Any setup? I don't remember. Okay, here we go. That was my house. Paul burned down the fence in the backyard. Uh, fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Okay, next one's yeah. called WTF. These are yours. Oh, these are mine. This one's mine. Okay, yeah. here we go. Introduce Nora Durst. What's she going to say? She lost her entire family, Doug. She'll say whatever the fuck she wants to. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great clip. Here's the next one. What the fuck, Joe? Oh yeah, Alana wanted that. <laughs> Alana wanted that. It's like the beginning where she's like. <laughs> it's the beginning where Jill elbows this girl on her sports team in the face. Oh and it's yeah, like gushing yeah. blood, and she goes, "What the fuck, Jill?" You can say field hockey, Alana. What oh, I forgot what it was. Jill? Field hockey. <laughs> You can say you can say field. Hockey. You can say you don't have to say sports thing. Sports. <laughs> what the fuck, Jill? We can play that for when we're when we're upset with some mistakes Jill makes in the That's series. That's fantastic. Um, okay, this next clip is called Meatloaf. This meatloaf's fucking spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This Shit. one's yeah. This, this one's this called. This is a good. This is a good cat for up for the first two episodes. This is a lot of good. Yeah, clips. I think we're doing great. The next clip is called "Dead." There's a dead dog in your trunk. <laughs> <laughs> great. This next one's called "Hugs." Magic fucking hugs. <laughs> Dude, these are gonna be great legendary these clips. These are really great. These clips are gonna come around. Magic fucking hugs. I feel like we gotta find our good morning. <sighs> yeah. I know that might be it. Magic fucking hugs. Um, all right. I don't wanna force it. We'll let the we'll let the you know We'll let the dogs out. Who? We'll let the dogs out and then they'll decide. <laughs> um, all right. Well you guys ready for some uh emails? Yeah. Dance thoughts? Let's see if we got a dance thoughts. All right. Come on, Dan. Right. Dan Lucas, dance thoughts. Wait, we've got dance thoughts on the ultimate Watchmen cut. <laughs> I think we covered those in that email and that podcast that got lost. Did we really? Yeah. Whoops. This is the part of the show where Steve tries to find the email song. <laughs> 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 no, we don't have Dan's thoughts, unfortunately. But Dan will get in here. He said he was going to do it with us, didn't he? I think so. Come on, Dan. All right, let's just do. Let's just go to the email theme. Which okay. one's that? Is that this one? I don't give a fuck, Becca de Goo. Tell yep. someone else. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, is it this one? <laughs> Yeah, we might need all new songs. Yes, we do. <laughs> Wait, maybe this is a good one. No, that's Dan's Thoughts. What about this? That's Dan's Thoughts. Clips. clips. No, that's Clips. Clips, Clips. <laughs> good night. <Ooh. laughs> oh, my God. That's incredible. That one's nothing. Have I not heard that before? Did you guys record that when I was gone? It was no, it was an old it's stuff from the old days. Holy shit, I love it. Okay. Let's do these emails, huh? Let's let's see if we can get if we can use the these. I wanted to play some music for this, but let's see if that might be too loud. Is there a lot of emails? No, no, not at all. Okay, good, good, okay. <laughs> not at all. Good, 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 good. Okay, so this one comes from Jing Zhang Max Tower. Not to say good, we love the emails, <laughs> but it's late on Mother's Day. Um, welcome back, y'all. Zhang says, "Hey, Alana, Brett, and Steve, I'm so happy that first time shows back. 
I just watched the first few episodes of Leftovers back when it came out, but never quite got into it. This podcast is going to finally get me in t- to finish it. Looking forward to the wild ride. Here's a little Leftovers fun fact for you. The Leftovers was a series that first came out in 2014, starring Justin Thoreau as the lead, Police Chief Kevin Garvey. But did you know that the role was originally being played by one Sylvester Stallone? No. With this original casting, we were supposed to be introduced to the grumpy police chief from the very first scene of the show. I managed to find an audio snippet of this early production. <laughs> please, I love the setup. Please. Fantastic. Fantastic deep setup. That's storytelling. Please play the attached audio file. Well, what do you say, kids? Let's play it. Should we play it? Let's find out about this original casting. All right, here it is. Here's an original audio clip of Sylvester Stallone in The Leftovers. Sam? Sam? Are you hearing anything? What the fuck? Where am I? <laughs> oh, Steve, you're here. my family? Oh, wait, you guys can't hear it? No. no. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was I was listening to it, to it and having a great time. I thought he was laughing because we weren't hearing anything. No, no, no. Sorry. Here we go. Here we go. Tell me if you guys hear this. Yes. Sam? What the fuck? Where am I? <laughs> Where's my family? Where's my mom? Adrian. Where's my mom? <laughs> Wonderful. Where's my mom? <laughs> Where am I? What the fuck? Where's my family? Uh, great stuff. Also, are parties in America usually like that? Super horny? Yeah, did you, Brett, did you ever go to a party like that? Where people were, like, burning themselves with for- hot forks and shit? Um, I don't know about the hot forks, but I, I've been to parties like that. Wow, really? Yeah. Where you're like, I, hey, you I spent you a short period that- of time suspended from high school for parties like that. You went to a party where, like, you and that girl go in that room and choke each other and f- have sex um it was it was more innocent than that but uh, it okay. was a different time alana not to that extreme in the way that that felt like a little bit involuntary if that makes sense like yeah we had like the seven minutes in heaven yeah. closet yeah. We or had like a, spin the bottle right you guys played spin the bottle we had similar levels of sex and other types of danger, but not ones that seemed as involuntary. That was like we did a lot more like truth or dare, party in the woods, shit like that. Yeah, they party were playing. At the beach. They weren't playing spin the bottle. They were playing spin the anarchist's cookbook. I do. I do like that that app for spin the bottle. I know. I, why yeah, didn't cool. they? Why didn't they make that app in conjunction with the the make show? Make that I feel app. Like you don't need to spin the phone though. Like the app, you, you can just, just tap touch it. it. Oh, yeah. that's fun. Well, that part made it kind of fun, though, Brett. Anyway, um, no, so no, parties in America. Not None of the parties we went to were really like that. And well. then he says, I will respect the format and watch two episodes weekly. Looking forward to finishing the series and getting my six-year-long questions answered. Love, Max. Same. Max, I'm with we're gonna, you. We're going to answer. We, we will answer every question. We're going to the ants go marching in. Um, we don't leave any threads left. Untied on this podcast. Beto Guevara says the leftovers notes from Madrid, Spain in lockdown. Oh, first let's take a sip. We got to juice up. Hello, lovely boys and lovely, lovely girl. This is your boy, Beto. Beto. I know this is a longer email than usual, but I believe it is worth it. And since I'm in Madrid in lockdown and have been for over two months... 
It would make me very happy if you read it on the show. We don't have any more time left. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Venezuela, humble brag, but living that glamorous lockdown life in Madrid, Spain. I'm staying safe and chunky. Quote, unquote, safe and chunky is my favorite capital cities song. Anyway, I saw the show when it first came out, and I loved it. I don't remember a lot of it, so I'm watching it along with you and have a couple of notes on the first two episodes. There are also some sounds recommendations. Okay. He did, like, a dance thoughts almost. Oh, good. Okay. Kevin's dad's... Man, they're, co they're coming for the throne. <laughs> Kevin's dad's bare ass is my favorite character of the episode, even better than Dead Dog. <laughs> is it bad I want Jill to break someone's nose at least once every episode? Oh my Alana's god, Jill. there with you yeah. during the sports. <laughs> what the fuck, what the fuck Jill? <laughs> um can that be a thing and they don't even acknowledge it like when Kramer comes in at the door on Seinfeld like a crazy person she just breaks someone's nose and keeps on walking? Ain't it nice when you walk by a picture every single day and it's fine, but that one day comes when you go, fuck it, and I'm going to elbow this four-cornered boy. <laughs> Spoiler, or I'm sorry, sound alert. Want to get stoned and play some ping pong? Oh, I almost pulled that clip. When she's like, and by ping pong, you mean? And he's like, it's kind of like tennis. <laughs> Whatever they gave that congressman, I need to snort it. This quarantine getting boring. Yeah, remember? <laughs> was it the congressman or was someone at the party who was snorting stuff? This meatloaf is fucking spectacular. We got that one. To be honest, I would also spend 12 hours a day just creeping on Liv Tyler if I had the chance. Sound alert. You mind if I jerk off? Optional. Be my guest. Sound alert. So, I mean, you're going to choke me or what? Are you going to choke me or what? Yeah, we got it. So, I mean, are you going to choke me or what? If you I find... like the term sound alert. Me too. Me too. <laughs> it's very ESL. Uh, if you find dead dog in your cop dad car trunk, you don't just bury it without asking, I think. That's what I said. Duh. Yeah, but they're just like dumb kids that are like, we got to bury this Steve dog. That's what said. I don't agree. I don't think they're that dumb at all. It's a small I feel town. like I'd call my parents. Me too. I mean, but she's like, like pissed at him and shit. <clears throat> Dudley, I would ask a couple questions. Dudley is inf infidelity a shit name for a dog? It definitely. He probably means definitely. Dudley is definitely a shit name for a dog. I just remember I love Nora Durst and I love her too and I also love her. <laughs> I'm from Venezuela, and I fully respect your right to protest, but the guilty remnants are dicks, right? Yes. Yeah. Seeing Anthony Bourdain on the Remember the Victims reel on the TV made me sad. Me too. Oh. That was yeah. rough. I also love that the entire cast of Perfect Strangers got, <laughs> got departured. That was probably a fun day. It's like, who should be on there? What if yeah. we just put the Pope on there? Shaquille I like, what about Mindy from Mork and Mindy? <laughs> um, seeing Gary Busey on the Remember the Victims reel on TV made me chuckle. I would set up 100 riots if it means Liv Tyler joins my crew. Okay, buddy, easy, easy, easy. <laughs> this dog-killing guy has so much tobacco on his mouth, he looks like he should run an Italian mob family. <laughs> Yeah. Episode 102, sound alert. Magic fucking hugs. Yeah, we got it. Magic fucking hugs. Charge My Batteries with Teenage Girls is my favorite Nirvana song. <laughs> I, too, great. would love to make pancakes for Arwen. All right, buddy. <laughs> pancakes for Arwen was at Fantastic Fest last year, and I really enjoyed it. Nora Durst has a gun, and I love her, and I love her gun. I like Jill's friend Amy. She likes sex, and she don't care about anyone's opinion. She is caring for her friend Jill, and she also wants to fuck her dad. She's the whole package. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. 
Nora Durst can do whatever the fuck she wants and she knows it. Okay, I know Jill and Amy are cute and all, but you don't let someone just get in your car and drive it, specifically, especially if you are late for school. Big no-no. Uh-oh. I'm not sure what to think about the Prius twins yet. Yeah. I think they're great. I love them. I find them adorable and and innocent. Yeah, innocent, keyword. I'll reserve my opinion. I'm re reserve my right to it. They seem like the kind of boys that are real dumb, but will learn and are willing to learn to not be pieces of shit, probably. That's what a bunch of boys were like in high yes, school. Yes, exactly. They saw like a wild manic pixie dream girl, and they were like, what do you I do to be near car? you? Yeah. yeah. Totally 100%. drive my car. That's like me and my girlfriends and so many boys. You probably got to drive so many boys' cars I just when didn't you were like, want can to. I drive your car? I would much prefer them to drive me. But you so. could have. Yeah, maybe, probably. You can yeah. drive my car anytime you want. I will hold on to that, because every time we're in it, you're like, no, let me drive. Oh, well, when <laughs> I want to drive you, but when you want to drive somewhere and you want to use my car, you could totally use it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Don't take so me wherever the fuck you're So if not in going. the car. I can drive. If I'm drive. not in the car, it's all yours, baby. Hit the road, Jack, and please come back. Um, let's see, uh, not, not a cult sounds like something someone on a cult, in a cult would say. I remember I eventually liked Tom's character, but my God, it's incredible how stupid he is. I bet he believes he is not in a cult. Agreed. Which one's Tom? Tom is the son who is uh, okay, protecting yeah, Holy yeah. Wayne's precious child. The guy from Kaboom. Yes, correct. Okay. No short... No shirt, getting out of a car trunk, coming from a shootout in a sex ranch. Definitely not a sketchy cult leader. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That scene when he's like taking his shirt off too to just take it from him. What a weird moment. That's yeah. a strange. It's a strange uh, guy. Like yes. A, a strange character. I love how Patty and Kevin's wife were having a paper argument and everyone in the room knew it and were silently like, oh, shit. <laughs> I like that, too. Where's the bagel? Where's the bagel, Brett? What did you think? Did you think the bagels got raptured? The bagels got bit. This isn't a, a copyright free um, song. I debated take, <laughs> pulling the sound clip of the entire bagel machine interaction. Wait, what? Where he's trying to find the bagel in the machine? Yeah. It's a it's a like sound designer's uh, wet dream. That oh, holds. right, right. <laughs> I, I hadn't thought about it. Oh, okay. I like that he asked if she took his bagel. I know, I love that. <laughs> Because they also wanted to remind the audience that that was still something that happened, and that it and that it's something that's kind of important. Yeah, that's that lost shit though. I love that he's kind of slowly going crazy or going something. Something's, Something's up. happening. Yeah, yeah, and I love it. It's and funny is if, it yeah, because he's his going dad's crazy. crazy? And he never put a bagel in there, and he's standing staring at the bagel machine. No, wall. he put a bagel in there. Did you see the last scene? What? He put a bagel in there. He yeah, I know. He fully put a bagel in there, and then it disappeared. I'm saying if the show showed us what he was seeing, but he never really put a bagel in there. Right, but then in oh, the oh. last scene, he finds the bagel. Remember? Wait, where? In the bagel machine. He opens up the bagel machine. And in the then last he, scene, he takes like a screwdriver, and he's like, he just sits takes there it apart. and takes it apart. And then he goes inside and he finds two hidden bagel slices. And you're like, yeah. oh, shit. Hold on. I'm pulling it up. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't remember this happening. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hold on. Was it the Hold last on. scene? We, it's I the last scene. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the last scene. I think or it's just the before actual... the last scene. The last scene's the tree chopping, right? Yes, it's just before that. Oh. All right. Hold on. This is when Brett had to oh, go yeah, pee. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Brett went to pee. It's okay. Everybody's got to <laughs> pee sometimes. Everybody's got to pee pee the bed sometimes. Um, let's see. Sound alert. Big, ba big bald asshole shooting dogs somewhere. 
Police officer takes a picture of Liv Taylor and says it's a good one. Yeah, no fucking shit. Wow, okay, you need to ease off the Liv Tyler stuff. Yeah, getting a little it's in. It's getting creeps, creep show now. I love how Patty and Kevin's wife... Okay, we saw that. Where's the bagel? Oh, what? Did I just not read that one? The fuck is wrong with a man having hand cream? Bad look for my guy twin number two. <laughs> yeah. This show really is... It dates itself in those moments for 2015. Dude, I 14, feel like teenagers still, still would say that shit. Teenagers, sure. Some, yeah. But he, it's not cool to say it anymore. He would, he never would have let me do that when he was alive. Wayne, buddy, anything but a yes is a no. Huh? Which part's that from? I don't know. Something Holy Wayne said, I guess. Sound alert. No shit. Oh, he's talking about when he kisses the dead guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's right. That's, that's right. funny. That's true. Uh, Sound alert. No shit. The hot cop. Oh, right. <laughs> when Liv Tyler finds out. Oh, Lori's... oh, fuck. I wanted to grab that. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. Anyways, always nice to crack open a genuine Miller draft with your crazy dog killing tobacco bald friend. Sorry, not friend. <laughs> Crazy dog killing tobacco bald guy feeling lonely? Yeah, no shit. Where's the bagel? Is crazy dog killing tobacco bald men real? I found the bagel. I'm not crazy. Sir, this is a Wendy's. Liv, uh, Liv Tyler all, can chop. brought Budweiser. Oh, shit. It was Budweiser. Liv Tyler can chop my tree any day. Okay, that was it. I hope you guys got this email before we record the episode. Wow, that was a really long email. That was great. Yay. I covered all the bases that we missed. And I love Spain. Go Spain. Priyanka I, Pierre. I missed when he found the bagel. I don't know how, because I I might have been writing down a clip or some garbage. Some mm. unimportant shit. Brett, Priyanka Pierre sent an email. I don't give a fuck, Becca de Glue. <laughs> Priyanka, Priyanka Beer says, hey, BBBBBs, first of all, your announcement couldn't have come at a better time. I know I'm not the only one going through it during this quarantine, so thank you for bringing a leal joy for this three-horn-born gal. I've never seen The Leftovers before. I'm excited to respect the format with you all. The first two episodes were so cool, and I'm hooked. Kind of weird how that one dude made out with the dead guy and then immediately asked for a hug, huh? So weird. <laughs> so Keep up the weird. work. Your friend, Priyanka Beard. That's great. The band's getting back together, guys. Priyanka's here, you guys. She's, She's right, right here. here. <laughs> Charlie Breadstick sends an, uh, an email saying, Hello, fellas. My name is Tinas. Much like the show I, itself, I'm going to start this email with a flashback. Late 2018, I watched the first episode of this show. Not long after, I hear that my favorite boys are going to do a podcast about it, so I wait. The files have sat unwatched on my computer of all this time, so please believe me when I say I am incredibly relieved that you guys have finally got around to this show. Damn, did we mention it in 2018? I'm sure we Probably. did. Probably. That sounds about, that tracks. Anyway, I have a couple of clips for you guys if you want them. I don't know how they're going to work with this quarantine shit going on. Yeah, I'm probably just not going to play those. Thanks, Charlie. Beto. So should people not send clips? No, no, they certainly should. It's just that it's we're like almost an hour and a half or over an hour and a half. Joe's going to be upset, Alana. <laughs> Joe's going to hit me again. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, per Morton. Joe's going to have feedback. Per Morton, Majol Carrion says, Hi, Steve and Brett. And Hi. Owen, you better be there, Owen Carter, and anybody else. Sorry to disappoint you. Can't believe we're finally doing the leftovers. I guess dreams do come true. I've seen this show too many times already. I stopped counting when I saw the first season for the 14th time. What? It's too many. And have introduced it to countless friends as well as my girlfriend, family, and and enemies. What the fuck? 
I love this whole show with all my heart and cannot wait to experience it again with you all. Justin Throw and Carrie Coon were robbed every year. They didn't get any awards, as was Mimi Leader, who is probably the best director on TV right now, solely based on her work on this show. That's all for now. I hope you're all well and safe, and I'll see you all later. Well, thank you there, Per Morton Mulcarian. Can you even believe Per Morton Mulcarian? I love it. Feels good. Feels good to be back. Daniel Echo Spider says, Leftover begins. Hi there, first timers. First of all, I hope you're doing well. The question is, before I even watch the first two episodes, what were your thoughts or expectations going into this show, knowing the creative talent behind it whenever you first watched it, now or then? Take care, Daniel, 32 iPhones. Brett, yes. Alana, yes. Stee, yes. Insert guest name here if applicable. Applicable, yes. Applicable. <laughs> Apple core. Apple course. I gonna... feel like we covered it, but Andrew I was definitely more Whitney. excited to watch it because of Lost. <laughs> yeah. Alana, yeah. do you have thoughts there? Uh, I didn't pay attention to anyone who was making it. I just saw episode one and then was in. Andrew Whitney. Now you know sense. Peter Berg was involved. Now you know Peter Berg was involved. Yeah, Berg. The director of Lone um, Survivor. Andrew Whitney sends an email saying... The Leftovers episode one. Hello to whoever is on this season of the first time show. I hope Owen is there considering his cigarettes seem to have a bunch of cameos in this series. <laughs> True. That's great. That's very funny. Maybe that's why Owen didn't want to do it. Because he didn't want people to just bully him about smoking the whole time. Too late. It's all we did on Lost. I doubt he thought that far into it. Found a huge Easter egg relating to religion and the dogs in the first episode. Wait, is it a spoiler? Did you know that dog backwards is race car? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> um, Big Hubert sends an email saying leftovers one what's going on boys and guys it's me oisin and i've gone missing first off a quick guide on how to pronounce oisin not like wasson anyway imagine you were pumping your chub into a fine piece of tail and all of a sudden k blammy they vanish I'd assume that my dick did that and I'd be too afraid to do any more banging for the foreseeable future. Anyway, bye-bye. Yeah. It'd be hard not to think about it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, that's it for emails, guys. We're done. <laughs> Great place to end it. We did it. <laughs> Brett, welcome back. I'm I'm so happy to be here. So we're we're gonna do we're gonna record these on Sundays. So if you want to okay. super respect the format, you can wait until Sunday to watch the next two episodes. But you gotta watch it early if you want to put an email in. Um oh yeah, yeah, definitely, because we record in the evening of Sunday and then these go up Monday morning. So we're gonna have to figure out how to make this workflow work when we're done with the leftovers are we gonna watch the kirk cameron version of left behind or the nick cage <laughs> version <laughs> well we gotta end every series with a movie right so let's yeah, do let's so, do left behind kirk cameron i, mean, I leave sure. it up to the audience to, to dictate <laughs> kirk but. cameron is on brand for leftovers because of the religious stuff captain kirk cameron <laughs> ladies and gentlemen thank you so much <laughs> what the fuck, Joe? For joining us on the return of the first time show. We're watching Leftovers. Thank you for listening. Don't forget, we're going to be watching two episodes at a time. And if you want to get your thoughts or questions or observations or sound clips to the show, you can send those to the first time show at gmail.com. That's T H E F I R S T. T-I-M-E-S-H 
O W, the first time <laughs> show at <laughs> Gmail. <laughs> What a Dear journey. Lord. Anyway, Alana, thank you for joining me. Any closing thoughts here? Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Brett, you feeling good? I'm feeling great. Who should we have on the show? A lot of people responded. Uh, a lot of my friends responded to me doing this. And so I'm going to send them a little message and say, whatever your favorite episode was, let me know and we'll have a guest on. Just surprise us. It'll be so fun to have guests and so easy to have guests on here because it'll just be Zoom people. Do it like that John Krasinski program and just be like, here's Oprah. I don't know what or who Leftovers that fan. is, but I will think I'll consider it. Okay, good. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening to the show. Of course, you might want to go to youtube.com slash thevalleycast to watch the video version of this podcast. It's essentially just the three of us looking pretty sleepy. Uh, but so cute. But so cute and very well lit for, well, some of us anyway. But uh, I, I listen, I professionally lit this. <laughs> it looks great, Brett. It looks like Thanks. David Fincher is directing a webcam girl. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. And we'll catch you next time on the first time show. Thank you, guys.